Um, to those of you who listen to the In the Bonus podcast, uh, you know how I feel about uh, people like Jay Williams and even Jalen Brown commenting on, well, you're asking him to do too much. You're not asking him to do too much. You're asking him to do too little. Too little. LeBron, two days ago, two days ago, was asked about Kyrie. I want you to take a listen to what LeBron James said two days ago. He apologized, but he caused some harm. I don't think it's unfortunate, but I don't stand on the position to harm people when it comes to your voice or your platform or, or, or anything. So it doesn't matter what color your skin is, how tall you are, what position you are in. If you are promoting or soliciting or saying harmful things to any community that harm people, then I don't, I don't respect it. I don't, I don't condone it. Okay. By the way, I guess it was over the weekend. I didn't hear it until a couple of days ago, so I apologize. Um, it's a good statement. He, he didn't say how he should be punished. He didn't say how much he should buy fine. He didn't say, he just said, look, I don't respect it. I don't get down with it. Great. All needs to be said. Got it. Noted. Put it aside. So then Jay Williams, Jalen Brown, some other NBA players like, whoa, this is just too much. What they're asking him to do. Six steps. Donate $500,000. Well, he was already going to donate $500,000. They weren't going to accept it because he wouldn't apologize. He went a week without, uh, now it's not, not that he went a week and went zero dark 30 and didn't apologize. He went a week being defiant, refusing to apologize, saying, and I quote, I won't stand down, not telling what we won't stand down for. He only apologized after the commissioner of the NBA said he hadn't apologized after the team that he plays for suspended him and said he wasn't fit to be a Brooklyn net then. And only then like, don't tell half the story. Here's LeBron James today on Twitter one hour and six minutes ago. I told you, I don't believe in sharing hurtful information and I'll continue to be that way. But Kyrie apologized. He should be able to play. That's what I think. It's that simple. Help him learn. He should be playing what he's asked to do to get back on the floor is excessive. In my opinion, he's not the person he's being a, 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 that's being portrayed of him. Anyways, back to my rehab session. I, re, really quick, this is very important. Right? No one is perceiving Kyrie any differently than how Kyrie is presenting himself. This isn't, let's not make Kyrie Irving a victim. Right? Not a victim. Nobody is changing the perception of him. The only thing we know is what we see. Right? And what we know, like the human brain doesn't work where you can compartmentalize everything out about a person and then just work in terms of this, this thing. And even if we're just taking this in, um, uh, what's it called in a vacuum, right? If this it occurs in a vacuum and he tweets out, retweets, uh, he retweeted a movie. If he, if he had just, if he had actually, as LeBron said, tweets something out, it's hurtful. He apologizes. He should be back. He should learn, be back on the floor. Everyone would agree with you, but that's not what he did. Just in this particular instance, he tweeted out. He was openly defiant. He went after Nick Friedle for questioning his motives of it. Nick Friedle was just like, Hey dude, just why don't you tell us what you meant by retweeting it. I don't have to stop dehumanizing me, right? He went after the reporter continually. And then he said, I won't stand down. And he only <clears throat> stood down when he was forced to apologize because he was suspended. Not taking into account the fact he works in Brooklyn, a heavily Jewish community. Think about that. It's one thing to offend a group of people. It's not, not good. But to offend a group of people in the, in the community in which you work, I mean, you know, think about that for a second. And then you have NBA players who are like, this is too much. No, it's not. He's lucky to have a job. Well, other people have said everyone else who have said and done things has lost their job. Rightfully so. Okay. And I'm not somebody like... I personally think the Brooklyn Nets want to do just enough to where they're kind of hopeful he doesn't fulfill those things they asked him to do. Because by the way, as predicted yesterday on the in the bonus podcast, they pummeled the New York Knicks without Kyrie Irving. And guess what? We're a better team without the guy who doesn't play any defense. And though marvelously talented, 
isn't really about team. The other part to it is like, this is a, it's a very selfish act. Understanding that Kevin Durant wants to play with you and not apologizing and not finding a way out of it. Then you got to go to the, so so look, the idea of LeBron James and Jalen Brown, and I respect Jalen Brown. He's a bright dude, but we can't simply dismiss the community in which he works and lives. The fact that the the league in which he works for has ha, has uh, has been ahead of everybody else in terms of punishing people who say nasty things, negative things about other races or uh, or sexual orientations, and then you factor in all of the other gobbledygook of Kyrie Irving. Just as if we just took Brooklyn, then you go okay. So, message to LeBron and to Jalen Brown, you got to stop. You don't know what you're talking about here. Going for a week, standing by a completely and utterly offensive movie that has that is filled with lies of not just anti-Semitism, but being a Holocaust, denying the Holocaust happened, is wildly and crazily offensive, especially when you triple down on it. And you live and work and benefit off of a very healthy, successful, and safe Jewish community in Brooklyn. Not even factoring in the world is flat, trying to break up the league during the pandemic, refusing to support Jock Vaughn and go into the bubble during the pandemic, refusing to support Steve Nash and you know, before, when he was hired saying we don't need a head coach, after he was fired saying, or before he was fired this past offseason, saying he wanted to work with the GM and the owner about picking out new players to add to the team. All this stuff. Wrong message, wrong messenger. Let's move on. Then you got LeBron. He got hurt again. Now, who could have seen this coming? Who could have seen it coming? Everybody. <laughs> Everybody. What I told you before the season started okay, is that I don't think the Lakers are particularly good. I don't love their roster. And that's with LeBron James playing and with Anthony Davis playing, and they're both injury prone. And LeBron James is, old, is long in the tooth. And so the likelihood is of more injuries. And you go like, well, LeBron James wasn't hurt the first 15 years, 16 years of his career. Got it. Now he's 39. He's been hurt every year he's been a Laker. Every year. Do you know why? You don't get less injured the older you get. You, you don't, unless you take steroids, of course. You know, or human growth. We have to go in the baseball thing. Like that, that makes sense. Right? No one has ever woken up at 39 years old and said, ah, I feel better than I did when I was 28. Nope. Doesn't happen. You don't get less injured. You get more injured. It happens more often. So it shouldn't be a surprise. And then, and no one has said this. You ready for it? Here's the kicker. LeBron's been playing offensively. LeBron's been playing well. Offensively, Russell Westbrook's been playing well past couple games. Right? Past four or five games. Good, really good offensive basketball. Shooting the ball well. Turning it over less. As a second teamer, been good. Anthony Davis hasn't been great, but he's been good. And he's been healthy. And they're still not winning. And here's the worst part. They're playing the easier part of their schedule. Right? Remember, they played they play the Jazz twice. They play the Kings coming up. They haven't played the Warriors. They haven't played the Mavericks. They haven't played... Uh, they played the Clippers, but the Clippers didn't even have Kawhi Leonard. Right? Lost the Clippers nine straight times. Kawhi didn't play. They lost. They played the Nuggets although the Nuggets are still early in the rehab of Jamal Murray, that thing's going to get tougher. They haven't played the tough teams in the East. Like, think about this for a second. They're awful. Now LeBron's out. It's going to get worse, and their schedule's more difficult. And I, I'm, I don't believe that LeBron James 
with everyone I know who works in the organization says, dude, LeBron James is an incredible worker and in rehabbing his body, not just taking care of his body, but when he, he rehabbed, like he's not Anthony Davis. He works to get back in. That's great. It just so happens that things are bad. And now LeBron might be out a, a certain amount of time. Tell me you've heard that one before. And what did we tell you had to happen in order to fix the Lakers? There was only one solution. It was to trade LeBron. Trade LeBron. Now, it's really hard because he has two sons in high school, one in his senior year, the other one in his sophomore year. He's made L.A. his home. And I'm sure, I don't think LeBron wants to go anywhere else because at this point in time, he's won titles. He's going to set the all-time scoring mark. It is what it is. And I don't, believe there's a championship team that would take him. That sounds crazy, but the championship team knows in order to get, take him, and this is going back to the summer, they would have had to give up so much that they wouldn't have been a championship team anymore, even with LeBron James, because of his age. But what's crazy is two things. One, no one pointing out that a couple of star players don't win you games in the NBA. Case in point, the Lakers. Look at, they got three dudes Averaging somewhere in the 70-point variety, uh, those three guys. And they're playing pretty efficient basketball. And they still can't beat anybody. Because teams win, players don't, especially now in the NBA. Secondly, all of those people that have said the Rams way is the right way. Go for it. Give up. Who cares about draft picks? Go for it. You can go for it. One, you better win. And two, better know what's coming. The Lakers went for it. They moved heaven and earth and they got Anthony Davis. And then they moved heaven, earth, and some other solar system and got Russell Westbrook. And now what's left? A terrible roster and the future appears bleak. And it's very similar to when Kobe Bryant finished his career where they were a mess. And you gave him a contract extension even though you knew it wouldn't end up having wins. Hard, hard decisions like parting ways with star players who have value while they have value is what great management's about. You can be critical all you want of Bill Belichick because of his press conferences, but he made hard decisions. Hard decisions. And for 20 years, they were great. Now he hung on to Brady as long as he could, but they made the playoffs last year, probably make the playoffs this year. He figures out a way to be just good every year by making hard decisions. What did Belichick do last year? Do you guys remember what he did before the trade deadline? Who was his best player? Stefan Gilmore. Coming up in a contract year. Traded him. Made the playoffs despite trading him. I, I didn't hear anybody pointing out like, you know, they, they might have been a little bit more effective in the playoffs if they had the best cover corner in the AFC East. Why'd they make that decision? Because they knew they didn't want to pay him at the end of the year. And by the way, they were right about that decision. So the Lakers are bad because they were unwilling to make the difficult decisions. Ironically, the Nets were at their best or their most fun when they didn't have stars. And oh yeah, by the way, they just happened to win last night and play one of their best games since Kevin Durant was there without Kyrie Irving. I don't care about stats. Stats are explanations for people who don't understand or don't watch the sport or need some sort of guide for it. All I care about is who wins and who loses. And the Nets look great last night with inferior <clears throat> talent, but a very good team play. And the Lakers, granted, LeBron got hurt in the fourth quarter. He had some sort of muscle stiffness, something in his groin. He said it's not as bad as a couple years ago. But the Clippers didn't have Kawhi Leonard and they ran him out of the gym. You be the judge.